This is Kevin Storm, and this is Rowan Roadbart, and I'm Jakob de Weiss. We're from Heidevog, and you are watching Stormbringer, the Austrian heavy zine. Heavy zine, very good. Mm, yeah. Have you seen it? Have you seen it? Have you seen it? Have you seen it? Okay, so uh, your recent album, which came out uh, last year, I guess, yeah, yeah, it's called Velua. Uh, I know I'm, I'm very curious, and I, ne I never read it. What what does Velua mean? Uh, Velua is uh, a name for the region where we live in. There's a big piece of n uh, nature in the Netherlands, and that's called the Veluwe. And Veluwe is an old name for the Veluwe. And this today is basically about the stories that happened over there on the Veluwe. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, it sounds a bit harder than harder. Yeah, a bit, a bit more harsh than, than the old yeah. albums. It's more, more guitars. It's a bit slower. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't know if it's just my impression, but uh, is there any reason maybe, uh, why that happened? Um, well, when we started writing uh, uh, this album, um, it happened that way because the stories that are on this album are um, uh, they got a, a bit of a, a rocking rock and roll kind of vibe to it uh, and they are also uh, handling about very like epic kinds of subjects so a lot of uh, myths and, uh, and legends and we want to uh, build the songs around uh, these uh, myths and legends so this was the music that fitted the best mm. I mean the, the other the last album of before that Batavi was about uh, uh, a lot about war and about uh, uh, people finding trying to find their place in the world and that asked for uh, like fast songs and and yeah fast paced songs and really like heavy 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 uh, stuff and this was just uh, it, it asked for more rock and roll approach mm -hmm. you mentioned war um uh, would have been a, le a question later on but um uh what, what do you think uh, is uh, is war necessary for mankind to clean up the history from time to time does it happen or has it to happen what do you think well i guess it's an interesting question because it's one of the things my father always used to say he says the world will continuously grow to hate each other more mm -hmm. until there's a new war and then people will understand what's important again and of course nobody wants a war but I think mankind has proven that mankind probably needs war mm. even though we don't want it but I, yeah it's the thing for, uh, like history repeats, it repeats itself. Yeah, it sadly repeats yeah. itself. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, I think so. Um, to come back to the to the Velo album, uh, do you think uh, because your 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 lyrics uh, they tell of the old days and of the dark ages, um, do you think it's necessary for you? Or how necessary for you is it to to use old instruments in your music beside the guitars and everything? Well, it's absolutely absolutely a nice addition to uh, to use traditional and more acoustic instruments because you know it relates to a lot of things that you know come with from within the person himself. You know, it's not amplified. It's not you know there's no addition to uh, to, to the original sound. Mm. So it's it's very true to, uh, to to the nature of people. Mm. Are you are you collecting old instruments like many folk folk bands do? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I don't think we are. No, no. Uh, I have a couple of traditional instruments at home which I try and, and, and you know maintain playing with it but uh, I'm not so much as a collector now. Mm. No. Mm. Um, now uh, you always uh, sing about uh, mythology, mm -hmm. uh, heathen mythology, <coughs> German, German mythology. Um, was this from, from the beginning on that you decided this is this is our lyrical theme or did you did you grow into that more and more? Yeah, I think uh, it was it was one of the things where Heidefolk started out with. Uh, we had two um, uh, two ideas. There was uh, a few guys who wanted to start a folk band, and a few guys who wanted to start a Viking choir. Okay. So, I read that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we combined it, and uh, I mean the the main the main subject uh, is not about Vikings, of course, but because we were, we we thought, hey, we will, we will sing in our own language. We will sing about the stories that happened in our country. There's not a lot of Vikings over there, mm. but we do have uh, the Frisians, the Saxons. I mean, a, a lot like the the, the German uh, um, ancestors. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, 
yeah, th those were the themes we started out. And <laughs> but would, wouldn't it have been funny to 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 make an experiment to to add a Viking choir to your music from so, someday? Yeah, yeah, just well, for, just for fun. Well, actually, we we will do more with uh, with choirs also our next album. Um, but uh, uh, I don't think we will sing about Vikings. <laughs> well, maybe we can encounter them and sing like Vikings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Let, let, like with the helmets, with the horns and everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. Helmets, <laughs> horns, <laughs> axe. <laughs> um, do, do you think uh, it's uh, it's uh, the, the the scene is over flooded with the folk, with so-called folk bands at the moment? Because I have the impression there are many folk bands around. Of course, many good folk bands. I'm not sure if you should call it over flooded. I think it's just a sign that um, the music is still very popular and there's a lot of new people who want to make that kind of music. And to bands like Heidevolk who've been around for a really long time, that's, I guess it's more of, of a compliment, you know, to see that there are a lot of new bands and they bring new stuff into the scene um, because everybody wants to carve out their own little niche. Mm. So I'm going to play this instrument, I'm going to do modern tech sounds in it. and. Then, You know, and but the the pagan or the folk element is always there, and it's 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 funny to see how much you can do with that kind of music. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody can have his own story, like you said with the instruments. You know, it's yeah. it's your own story related in this music, yeah. and I think every scene has it nowadays. And uh, it's not only in the folk metal scene; it's it's a lot of bands everywhere because we have the internet, and it's possible mm -hmm. to you Everyb know, everybody to get can noticed. record. Exactly. That's yeah. that's also the thing. Everybody can record at home right now. Yeah, but it's not always for the good. <laughs> no, no, no. Sometimes there are things Great that that should that should be uh, that should be kept personal. The music and <laughs> for their own enjoyment. But uh, no. But uh, I also think that the uh, the there was a, a huge folk metal boom. Uh, Back in 2002 to 2010, yeah, it was when, uh, it was Fintral uh, um, and every, everything yeah. started out. Yeah. yeah, and then there were a lot of bands, a lot of bands. But you see a lot of uh, of those bands that are now uh, deciding to call it quits. They or they grew out of it, or they got kids at home and they cannot uh, be on uh, on the road anymore. So there are now less bands and the bigger bands uh, like uh, well like Fintral and Zephyr and mm -hmm. those kind of bands they survive and they get booked onto the main stages of festivals and they are accepted by the whole metal scene mm -hmm. I think that's something uh, a lot of when a scene evolves you can see this as some kind of end stage that there will be a few bands left that uh, get accepted by the whole uh, metal community and make out perfect programs for main stages it's like like Darwin said Survival of the fittest. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> um, uh, but but you found your own. Uh, he mentioned the niche. Uh, he, you found your own niche. You you started out with two singers, mm -hmm. and I think it's a, a main trademark for uh, it was always for me. Yes, it is. Uh, and uh, is this the leftover of the Viking choir? Or? I suppose it is. Yeah. I mean, uh, the whole Viking choir thing was way before I joined. I'm one of the new members right now. Um, but you can clearly hear that there's a basis. For from that in what we still do, you know, with the with the with the two singers mm. in harmony, in close harmony most of the mm -hmm. time. You know, so that that has a real choir element to it. Yeah, I mean <coughs> it's it's uh, obviously a trademark, the, the dual male vocals. Um, but you can now see it also as an instrument that has so much more opportunities than mm -hmm. just one vocal. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in the beginning, we experiment with uh, we experimented with four singers, so that was like a real choir, a real small choir, um, and now we're experimenting with three singers and and adding some uh, grunts to it or whatever. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's always stays something you can explore and. and we're broadening the spectrum, so to say. Yeah. We're broadening the spectrum, mm -hmm. so to say, from what you can do with multiple singing. Mm. It, it was the thing that drew my attention to the band was mm -hmm. the, the the singing. Yeah. We talked about other folk bands. You you did a split with Ailstorm and Tuyr, yeah, uh, yeah, some years ago, and they also did a tour. Um, there was a big of a, a, a fuss uh, in the last time about Tuyr with the whale with the whale catching and everything. Did you did you follow the media bashing of the band? Yeah, I've seen some of it on Facebook. I I, I didn't follow the whole story behind it. I I, I think I saw uh, one video of Harry uh, talking about it. Um, but I no, I didn't get really into the into the the topic. Mm. I mean, um, I think everybody should have his own opinion, and I, ca I, ca I cannot judge from here uh, what or 
what or what, what, what he means by it. But I know Harry is Harry is cool. Harry is a cool guy. So yeah. I don't know. So you think it's overrated? Um, I don't. I don't overhyped. know. I don't, I don't know if it's maybe it's overhyped. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of uh, uh, on the internet that gets overhyped, but uh, um, I don't know the, the reasons behind it. So I, I don't think I have any more comments on that. Mm. Well, I think we, I, I followed a bit because I, um, I believe strongly in animal rights. Um, so the thing is, the first time you hear of it, you think. You only see the headlines, yeah. and you go like, um, "This is really bad, and people shouldn't do that." And the the comments that he gave were really well informed mm -hmm. and really based on, "But this is our tradition, and this is maintained, and this is only in our region, and only when the leader says we can go, and only then does the mm -hmm. village take what they need." And it's it's strongly based in their tradition, and. Um, I think the way he came up for the tradition and I tried to explain to people um, if we ship in meat that we don't catch ourselves we're hurting the environment even more and so the, the reason that he really was informed in the, in the subject to me changed my opinion on mm -hmm. the matter because I was really against it when I read the internet headlines yeah. of wow he's a bastard and wow mm -hmm. these people do that and you see the, the photo of him yeah, of cutting up the whale and of course, I personally, you know, you feel hurt because, mm. you know, you believe in animal rights, but the position he takes in it, I can understand now. And it, I think it's the trouble nowadays with internet. You just read the headlines yeah, and you go, people, yeah. Yeah. we're against Very it. Very yeah. yeah. So, I, it, it was a risk of him to take the position that he did, but, um, yeah, I understand his position. In, mm -hmm. Yeah. And talking about traditions, uh, you are very strong rooted in in your home province of of Gelderland. Yeah. Uh, what what what's the basic difference to the other provinces in in in, in the Netherlands? Is it better than the other? <laughs> <laughs> like course, we, we, like Vienna, like Vienna is better than every other yeah, yeah, county. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, of, of course it's better. I mean, we have the 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 most beautiful women over there. We've got the best beers. Uh, I mean forests and uh, heathlands they are amazing and i can say this now because right now we have four members that aren't from gelderland okay. so i see yeah, two yeah. very jealous people over here that uh, really want to talk no, about their own uh, province but uh no you've got a point there i mean i i come from from i come from rotterdam from the from the the, the, the more uh, west po western part of uh, of, yeah. of the netherlands but Actually, I do want to live in Gelderland. So yeah, you made a point over there. <laughs> yeah. So 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 you you are a very international yeah, band yeah. now. Now we're very in 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 a, in a in Netherlands yeah. aspect. Yeah. <laughs> in, 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 in the, the Netherlands. Netherlands. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think you're you're also very very rooted in in the in the traditions there because you sing of it and you sing of the wars there and you sing mm -hmm. of, the, of the of the dark ages. Uh, how, how important is it uh, in general? Not for you only, but what do you think? How important is it uh, today to to stand up for for your own uh, traditions and your culture? You know, it's it's not so much uh, standing up for it. It's more like telling the stories to keep it alive. Mm. I mean, uh, there are a lot of uh, stories that are connected to the to the grounds, to the woods, to everywhere uh, where we live. And a lot of these stories get forgotten. And there are so uh, nice stories, uh, gruesome stories also, but um, you really want to tell about it because you want to share it with the world. Mm. The world is behind the internet and they're reading things like uh, headlines. headlines. <laughs> yeah, exactly, uh, wheel this or whatever. <laughs> but uh, um, the world gets m so more interesting if you dig down in the in the stories that are rooted to your own the own part of your mm -hmm. Netherlands, uh, of, of of your own uh, province, and I mean it, it's got tons of, uh, of of information, tons of uh, lessons uh, of life, mm -hmm. and tons of uh, nice stories you can tell your kids one day, you know. I think I think basically it's 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 better for for, the, for every for everybody to learn history. Yeah. Not only of his own country, but in general, because it's uh, it it reveals uh, many things that you see it does. you don't see without it. No, definitely. And what we said, history keeps repeating itself. Yeah. So we we can tell what will what will go on in the in the next uh, few hundred years, of course. <laughs> but. Uh, um, yeah, I, I was talking with someone who was really into uh, development of new things, etc. And he actually he said, 
sometimes history can be irrelevant for it. Mm. But then we talked about it and he was like, no, actually history is relevant, but because most developments uh, uh, come uh, from from the historic kind of view that you, you're you somewhere, you have to adapt to nature or you have to adapt to whatever and you're inventing something. And when you look back in history, there are a lot of inventions that we now take for granted, yeah. but they were because of a reason uh, invented over there which came out because there was a lack of something yeah yeah for example when you when they're trying to grow crops in the desert mm. i mean they had to irrigate and and then that started and that was like four thousand four thousand five thousand years ago mm -hmm. in, uh, in mesopotamia uh, you know yeah. the so yeah there are a lot of interesting uh, things in history so do you think uh, the dark ages were a nice times because most of the most of the bands try to romanticize uh, those those days, you know, like with all the the, the knights and all the the, the the castles and everything. Yes, well, <laughs> I, I I would say nice isn't the right choice of words in that case, <laughs> but I mean it, it it really really speaks to your imagination, and you know it's 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 a time where a lot of stories come from or has their base in, so. Um, no, I would rather say it's interesting times instead of nice. I think I think most of us wouldn't survive a day over there right now. <laughs> <laughs> would you? Would you? Would you have liked to live there? No, 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 no not at all. No. Not, not curious. One day, yes, if you curious, have to, if absolutely. To I mean, if there was such an invention as a yeah. time machine yeah. right now, I would get in there and you know have a look around. But you know. <laughs> I would be so glad if I could push a button and be right back into safety <laughs> where I'm now. I mean, relative safety that is. That's yeah. that's that, that's the main thing. When I go back in time, I want to back, go yes. back again yeah. as well. What do you think? Uh, you're curious what what what, what happens really there with all the blood and the, the, yeah, the battles. First thing I, said is I wouldn't last a day. <laughs> I could pretend to be uh, really strong and Viking on stage, and yeah. uh, you know, but no. Um, time machines. <laughs> No, it's just no. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm, I would, I would love to to be there one day. I mean, I'm also really, uh, um, really excited to see what really happened over there. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are a lot of stories, and of course, you got the gruesome stories that are in the history books, and uh, everybody has his opinions on it. But I'm really curious what actually happened during a normal mm -hmm. day. Uh, what probably the what the people talked when they came home from battle? Yeah, like, like hello, darling, I'm home. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's full hey, I'm home. <laughs> Brought you some hats. <laughs> okay, so we started out with your new album, and we ended up with the time machine. So that's a pretty that's a pretty good development. Yeah. Um, I think there's nothing left to say on my on my side. Uh, mm -hmm. Anything left to say on your side to uh, our viewers? Yeah, I mean, we're going to make an introduction, of course, uh, but. Uh, um, I would like to say that uh, um, we are with Heidevolk now in 2016. We are uh, still promoting our last album, Velua. Um, and after this tour, we will uh, head back to the studio to make some demos. And we already wrote a lot of songs. So we're going to be recording a new album. And this will be the first album where uh, Mr. Kevin Storm over here and Jakob de Weiss will feature on. So uh, we're really excited to, uh, to work with them. Yeah. And so are we. Yeah, of Obviously. course, of course, yeah. of course, yes, and so are we, of course. And uh, I say thank you to oh. you guys. And uh, next time we meet, we make some history lesson. Yeah, for, for the I people out that. there. And I uh, think we can rewrite history. Then yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. everybody does. We'll make a, a discussion like like the late night shows on television. Yeah, where people, yeah, yeah, where people discuss about God and everything. And with, and with, with, a, with, with a mug of uh, coffee. Like, yeah, of course, of course, of course. With my own picture on it. Yeah, I know. <laughs>